All right, move away from Nigeria. Let's go to Kenya now, where the bodies of six male and one female have been retrieved from Kenya's River Yala in the past two months. According to medical superintendent Bruno Okal, the bodies were collected from different spots in the river and calls on families with missing relatives to visit its Yala sub-county um, hospital morgue to find out whether they are among the recovered bodies. Some of the seven bodies had begun decomposing, uh, just like 32 others retrieved from the river in January, the same river, uh, I think it be in January. Now, of those retrieved in January, 13 were positively identified by relatives through DNA analysis and were subsequently collected and buried. Let's now bring in Hussein Khalid, he's Executive Director, Haki Africa, a Kenyan rights group that has been monitoring this development. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. <laughs> Now, the last time that we had you here was back in January when there were over 21 bodies that were retrieved from Rivayala. And now we're talking about this again. What actually is happening? What is the mystery behind the River Yala? Thank you so much. And uh, again, let me appreciate uh, your interest in following up on this matter because this is the only way we can raise uh, uh, accountability measures uh, to be followed up. Um, so what's happening in Rivayala, um, we have uh, since established that uh, in the last one month or so, um, the authorities have been able to fish out uh, eight bodies, um, seven of those morgue, and one has been taken to the CIA morgue. Up to this point in time, we still don't know uh, the identities of those bodies. We don't know who is exactly, uh, uh, you know, behind these murders. But what we know is that uh, bodies are still uh, being fished from the river. And, um, you know, it's something that has raised a lot of concern among Kenyans. Well, you know, now you just mentioned you, you're not sure who is behind these murders. Um, there are reports, you know, not just from you now, suggesting that these bodies were from extrajudicial killings, possibly carried out by state security agencies. Do you share the same sentiments? Um, the manner in which uh, these bodies have ended up in the river um, suggests a likelihood of uh, state authorities' involvement. Uh, because uh, in the past we've been informed that uh, these bodies are brought there vehicles suspected to be police vehicles um, the few bodies that have identified um, like uh, you know early on uh, they are individuals who are law individuals who either had court matters uh, ongoing or individuals who are being sought after by the police so um, there's reasonable suspicion um, that uh, there is a uh, it is uh, being involved in uh, their demise. That's why we're saying, uh, you know, investigations have to be undertaken to ascertain who is behind uh, these incidences so that uh, we can get to the bottom of it and those responsible to face the full wrath of the law. Um, Hussein, you mentioned the, um, something about investigations. Now, when we look back at the reports that were made in January, the diver who brought those bodies out talked about bringing them out, seeing some of the bodies covered with polythene bags over their heads and some of them in sacks that had been sewn, basically showing signs of torture and murder. Between January and September 2022, what investigations have been done in this regard? Is the government saying anything? Are the authorities saying anything about this? Unfortunately, um, as we speak, uh, no serious action uh, has been confirmed to have been uh, taken. Uh, up to this point in time, we've not had any arrests by the authorities. We also know that majority of the bodies that we found earlier on were buried in a mass grave because uh, the identities were never confirmed uh, who they were. So, you know, the, the period that uh, by law, uh, after that period lapses, then uh, these people are supposed to be buried. So majority of those bodies were buried in a mass grave. Again, uh, this time round, uh, it's the same kind uh, of uh, you know, state of bodies that we are seeing. Uh, even these new bodies, the seven, eight bodies that we found, uh, they are those that were found uh, in sacks, the same way that we, we, we found the previous ones. Um, there are torture marks uh, visible. So, you know, it, it would appear that uh, after we broke out this story, after we highlighted the story, there was a lull of some sort. Uh, you know, it stopped for a while, 
but now uh, it's continuing again. Well, can you, can you um, kindly help us turn uh, your camera on? Uh, we seem to have lost uh, visuals with you. Um, but I, I also want to, you know, speak with regard to security agencies. Uh, Kenya has a new president, uh, William Ruto. Um, is there expectations that there would be an, in, um, an improvement with regards to the quality of policing, the quality of security agencies, and investigation into some of these um, type of shocking findings in Kenya? A week or so. So we can't really uh, judge and say that uh, he has either made some changes or not. We know that uh, this is still the work of the previous regime. But uh, we remain hopeful uh, because uh, in the last uh, couple of days, he has said the right things, including uh, giving the police authority in the country uh, financial uh, independence. So the police no longer now rely on the executive for their, for their resources. He has signed that particular directive. So the police have the independence to do their work. And that's a good sign. So we hope that uh, he will continue in that uh, same regard so that uh, we can have a police force or police service that uh, respects the people's wishes and does not operate within the whims of the executive. Thank you so much, uh, Hussein, for your time this morning and for the work that Hacky Africa is doing as regards following up with this case. We look forward to having you when we have tangible updates and more importantly, when we have justice being meted out. Yes. Uh, as Haki Africa, what we are doing, first of all, is to highlight these cases, to bring them to the attention of Kenyans and the world, of course, so that they know what is happening, so that we can apply pressure all of us uh, collectively. And then uh, we are also working with families of persons who have disappeared. As you may know, uh, this is also another major concern in Kenya. People who are disappearing, people who are picked by persons who identify themselves as police officers, never to be seen again. So we are working with these families. We are taking them to Yala to look at the bodies that are there. It's a very tedious exercise. It's a very challenging exercise for people to have to go through dead bodies looking for their kin. But uh, unfortunately, it's something that we have to do. So we are trying to you know, help uh, these families just to confirm and uh, to help the government to know the identities of the bodies that are being uh, uh, retrieved from the river. All right. All right. Thank you so much and uh, must be also very traumatizing. We'll definitely be speaking with you again. Thanks once again.